Hello. Well, the next case I want to talk to you about relates not to tangible property like we've looked at in Re London Wine with wine, in Gold Corp with Gold Bullion, or Boyce and Boyce with the houses in Southwold, or Gole with a flat. It's not about tangible property, but it's about intangible property. This case, and of course, it's Hunter and Moss, and the citation for that case is 1994, square brackets, one weekly law reports at page 452. And eventually it goes up to the Court of Appeal, as we'll see. So it's intangible property as subject matter that we're thinking about. Although, of course, you can have tangible evidence of title. And here is an example. So here's a share certificate. And as I say, this is prima facie evidence of title. So if your parents have any share certificates, perhaps in the Standard Oil Company, this is obviously an American example, or even older share certificates in companies like the East India Company, of course I jest in relation to this share certificate. If your parents or indeed any relatives or indeed yourself has any share certificates, physical possession is prima facie evidence of title. So go and score all those out and then you can purport to be an owner of chosen action, of shares in the company. Of uh, chosen action being a thing. Helpfully certain definition there of, uh, of that kind of proprietary interest in a juristic person. So Hunter and Moss then, why is it important? Well, what we see here is Mr. Ravinda Sood, who's the original shareholder. He holds 95% of the shares, is, uh, sorry, 950 of the shares in the company, MEL Limited, which is an electrical goods supplier in terms of its objects. That's to say the objects of the company, not the, the objects of a trust. So MEL Limited, electrical supplier, he's got 950 shares. He says that he will um, declare himself a trustee of 5% of those shares which equates in value to a rather significant amount, just under £113,000. So he purports that he'll hold those shares uh, as a trustee for the benefit of a new shareholder. Um, in due course, of course, there is a battle for value because I presume he doesn't want to give up that value, significant value that we've just talked to. Um, so he tries to argue there's uncertainty of subject matter in relation to these species of property, these intangible shares. Up until this point, it was thought that in relation to shares, to be certain, to make a disposition, that you had to give the entirety of shares in a given company. So the shares obviously have to be of a certain class, that's to say ordinary shares, preference shares or even perhaps cumulative preference shares it doesn't matter as long as they're all of a given specified class and obviously in a specified company so 50 of my ordinary shares in the standard oil company might be specific enough to be certain in terms of certainty of subject matter so going back to Hunter and Moss and the story, so he, he holds himself out as a trustee. There's then uh, perhaps a change of heart, which means there's a battle for value between uh, Sood and the new shareholder. Goes up before Mr. Colin Rimmer QC at first instance, who was sitting as a deputy high court judge in the Chancery Division. And he holds that there was a valid oral declaration of trust whereby Sood constituted himself a trustee for the plaintiff uh, of 5% uh, uh, of the company's shares. So Hunter there is, of course, pleased. Well, then it goes up on appeal, as you know, into the Court of Appeal before Dillon, Mann and Hurst, those Lord Justices. They make two interesting observations. First, they say, uh, uh, in terms of the shares that one needs to be specific about the company, as I've just said. So 
we have to indicate which company. We know it's M-E-L here. But then they say this, and this is the key part of the ratio for us, that the uh, since the shares were held by the defendant were of such a nature as to be indistinguishable from each other and were all therefore capable of satisfying the trust without identify, identifying any particular 50 shares, the trust was not void for uncertainty of subject matter. Ergo, there was a trust. Rimmer's first instance decision was upheld. And in terms of policy, now we don't have to give away the entirety of shares, but we can give away a given percentage of a species of specific share in a specific company. So Hunter and Moss is important because it deals with intangible property in the nature of shares, a very frequent species of property that comes up, as you'll see in the area of trusts, uh, but also that it perhaps moves us away from how shares were disposed of historically. So enjoy the case, and until our next short video, uh, or equity shorts, I should say, goodbye.